Edging with Swap Case Study P&G versus Bankers Trust. Good afternoon everyone, let's start a hedge. Is a risk management strategy. It deals with reducing the risk of uncertainty related to the adverse price fluctuations in an asset. The aim of this strategy is to restrict the losses that may arise due to unknown fluctuations in the investment prices and to lock the profits therein. It works on the principle of offsetting i.e. taking an opposite and equal position in two different markets. In simple terms, it is hedging one investment by investing in some other investment. Hedging example. Let us understand hedging by a simple example. When you buy a life insurance policy, you support and secure your family's future in case of your death or any serious injury in some accident. Similarly, when you secure your A investment's loss by offsetting it with B investment's profit, it is known as hedging. Areas of hedging and their risk a business can implement hedging technique in the following areas. Commodities include agricultural products, energy products, metals, etc. Securities include investments in shares, equities, indices, etc. Currencies include foreign currencies. There are various types of risks associated with it. Interest rates include the lending and borrowing rates. Hedging types, not only for reducing risk. Hedging is also useful as a means to earn profits by trading in various commodities, securities or currencies. First forward, or a forward contract is a non-standardized contract to buy or sell an asset between two independent parties at an agreed price and a specified date. It covers various contracts like forward exchange contracts for currencies, commodities. Second futures, futures, or a futures contract, is a standardized contract to buy or sell an asset between two independent parties at an agreed price, standardized quantity, and a specific date. It covers various contracts like currency futures contracts, etc. Third money markets. It is one of the major components of financial markets today, where short-term lending, borrowing, buying and selling are done with the maturity of one year or less. Money markets cover a variety of contracts like money market operations for currencies, money market operations for interest, covered calls on equities, etc. Hedging strategies. A hedging strategy generally refers to the risk reduction technique of an investment. Here can be no standard strategy to hedge various financial instruments like forward contracts, options, swaps or stocks, because these strategies require constant modification as per the type of market and investment, which requires hedging. A business can implement few strategies which are as follows. 1. Hedging through asset allocation. 2. Hedging through structures. 3. Hedging through options. 4. Staying in cash. Let's start swap. Swap is derivative contract through which two parties exchange financial instruments. These instruments can be almost anything, but most swaps involve cash flows based on a notional principal amount that both parties agree to. Usually, the principal does not change hands. Each cash flow comprises of one leg of the swap. One cash flow is generally fixed, while the other is variable, that is, based on a benchmark interest rate, floating currency exchange rate, or index price. The most common kind of swap is an interest rate swap. Swaps do not trade on exchanges, and retail investors do not generally engage in swaps. What is an interest rate swap? An interest rate swap is an agreement between two counterparties in which one stream of future interest payments is exchanged for another based on a specified principal amount. Interest rate swaps usually involve the exchange of a fixed interest rate for a floating rate, or vice versa, to reduce or increase exposure to fluctuations. In interest rates or to obtain a marginally lower interest rate than would have been possible without the swap. Swaps are often utilized if a company can borrow money easily at one type of interest rate but prefers a different type. Type of interest rate. 1. Fixed to floating. 2. Floating to fixed. 
three floats to float. Why is company want to use swap? Also help companies hedge against interest rate exposure by reducing the uncertainty of future cash flows. Swapping allows companies to revise their debt conditions to take advantage of current or expected future market conditions. Currency and interest rate swaps are used as financial tools to lower the amount needed to service a debt as a result of these advantages. Let's see the example. Suppose company A is located in the US and company B is located in England. Company A needs to take out a loan denominated in British pounds and company B needs to take out a loan denominated in US dollars. These two companies can engage in a swap in order to take advantage of the fact that each company has better rates in its respective country. And these two companies could receive interest rate savings by combining the privileged access they have in their own markets. Now let's see the advantage of interest rate swap. First is interest rate swap hedging. The interest rate swap is a technique for hedging risk of unfavorable interest rate fluctuations. Second an interest rate swap agreement can reduce uncertainty. Lastly an interest rate swap can reduce the cost of a loan. Now let's move on to case study P and G versus BT. P and G versus Bankers Trust. November 1993. Procter & Gamble Company is an American multinational consumer goods corporation headquartered in downtown Cincinnati, Ohio, founded in 1837 by British-American William Procter and Irish-American James Gamble. Bankers Trust, BT, is a wholly owned subsidiary of Bankers Trust New York Corporation, BTNY. BTNY is a state-chartered banking company. BT trades currencies, securities, commodities and derivatives and is a registered broker-dealer. As P&G was looking to make small gains wherever possible, they approached Bankers Trust for a derivative deal. P&G decided to enter into a high-risk complex derivative of vanilla swaps through BT which was a top player in risk management at that time. The contract made was floating rate notes in Deutsche Marks and Dollar. The bets were made on the assumption that interest would fall and P&G up the stakes by betting 21-1 in favor of an interest rate fall. BT and P&G entered into an interest rate and currency exchange agreement on January 20, 1993. During the fall of 1993, the parties agreed to a swap transaction on November 2, 1993, referred as 5s slash 30s swap. The parties amended this swap transaction in January 1994, they postponed the date the spread was to be set to May 19, 1994, and P&G was to receive CP-88 basis points, rather than 75 basis points, up to the spread date. In late January 1994, P&G and BT negotiated a second swap, known as DM swap based on value of German Deutschmark. If swap rates stayed within that band of interest rates, the spread was zero and if it broke that band, it would be set on Jan 16, 95. In 1994, Federal Reserve Chairman Greenspan raised the rates as market was expecting. As a result, P and G lost heavily. FO of P and G claimed that they were unaware with the contract details and BT did not transparently stated the underlying risk inherent in those contracts. P and G sued BT for $195 million. In their defense, BT claimed that P and G had their own expert panel in action to forecast the interest rate fluctuation and those experts believed that everything was smooth up till they were making handsome gains from those contracts. Eventually both the parties settled outside for around $78 million. BT claims that P and G owes it over $200 million and refuses to pay. P and G says that it owes nothing because it was defrauded, BT suffered from serious reputational risk, lost the trust of its valued clients and laid bare the process lacunas in its system. Thank you.